How do you make music mean something? Go back, Sam! Going to Mordor alone. Of course you are! And I'm coming with you! This music is inherently beautiful. With its reaching, spacious string lines, it speaks of something simple, but fragmented and desolate. Out of context, it still moves us, but not as much as when we know where it has come from and where it needs to go. Howard Shaw had the daunting task of not only bringing the landscape and cultures of Middle Earth to life, but more significantly, telling a story whose music unfolded gradually over 11 hours of film. And at the centre of this story, he had to capture the lives, struggles and journey of two hobbits whose music is based on a single theme taken from the place where the journey began. The Shire's music is unassuming. Its placement early in the Fellowship of the Ring, mostly played by solo whistle or clarinet, ties it inextricably to the feeling of comfort and warmth that Frodo associates with home. But it's not intransigent. In fact, the opposite. It will, over the course of the first film, transform into the broken, dejected D major material that we've just heard that accompanies Frodo and Sam's break from the Fellowship. But it will also change into something completely new. And I think in order to understand how and why Shaw does this, and how this makes us care deeply about these characters, we need to go back, back to the point of transition between a life before the ring and the journey to Mordor and the life after. The beginning of Frodo and Sam's journey is accompanied by two themes. The journey there motif, which concludes with plaintive oboe and horn solos. This is it. This is what? If I take one more step, it'll be the farthest away from home I've ever been. And after this, the Shire theme again, this time played by solo French horn underneath hymn-like chords. Already even a short distance from home, the innocent and pensive setting of the melody is beginning to fade, replaced by a more confident version one that's full of the promise, but also darkness, of the adventure that lies ahead. This theme won't appear again until Frodo reunites with Bilbo in Rivendell. Shaw gives us the hymn-like version of the Shire theme here, with the melody played by strings and solo clarinet. It seems a little more elegant with Bilbo, Shaw explains. I couldn't use the whistle here, it's too tender a scene. The tenderness in the music comes from the warm string writing, but also the small elaborations on the melody. Inflections which add humanity to the sound, like a singer improvising on a melodic line. The theme is becoming more complex and the harmony richer as Frodo begins to understand the emotional and physical burden he is carrying. As the Fellowship sets out, we hear an expectant and shimmering version of the Shire melody. In a completely new orchestration, played on the French horn, which is followed directly by the Fellowship theme. This is the beginning of the decline of the Shire's music. Frodo and Sam are associating themselves more strongly with the Fellowship and their quest than with the Shire, and they are also getting further away from home. In fact, the renditions of the Shire theme become increasingly scarce, appearing mostly when Frodo and Sam reminisce, or when something associated with their home is lost, forgotten or broken. At the beginning of the third film, we return to the Hobbits as they get closer to Mordor, 
and hear fragments of a melody played on a clarinet underneath minor modal harmony. All right. We don't have that much left. We have to be careful. The clarinet is searching for the Shire's melody, but is unable to find it, as if reaching for something in the darkness. There should be enough. For what? The journey home. And on the stairs of Sirithungal, the music that was created in the Shire is finally destroyed. You can't help me anymore. You don't mean that. Go home. Again, searching clarinet, string, and Koron Glay lines mark out shards of the Shire's theme, dissolving as soon as they appear. The question is, though, what has happened to the Shire's music now? It might appear to have gone completely, but I would argue that one theme, the singular most important theme in Shaw's score for the return of the king, takes its place. Yes. Just another path. As Gandalf and Pippin shelter behind the quickly failing defences of Minas Tirith, soft choral chords accompany Gandalf's comforting thoughts, hanging effortlessly on his words. And then you see it. In a warm C major, Shaw introduces the Grey Havens, played by cellos in unison. White Shaws. Far green country into a swift sunrise. This is the same feeling of comfort that we experience when listening to the Shire's music. And although they're not necessarily linked yet, there is a moment in the return of the king that ties them indefinitely. At the end of their journey, at the point furthest away from home, Frodo and Sam collapse out of exhaustion. But Frodo tries to push on, crawling forward, accompanied by the simple, pure tone of a whistle, playing in D major. The simplicity of the Shire and of their lives before still lives in the sound of this instrument, but the memory of home is so faint that the melody again can't be found, only an impression of the Shire's music. It has come so far. Shaw gives a tender, operatic reading of this scene, moving between different modalities and keys as Frodo talks of the darkness inside his soul. Naked in the dark, then let us be rid of it. And out of the outline of the Shire's music, as Sam summons the strength to carry Frodo, comes the second rendition of the Grey Havens. But I can carry you! still in its rich C major, now played by horns and trumpets. Sam knows that this is the end. Frodo is lost, but they still need to complete the journey. I can see the shot. What makes music mean something? Music, like memories, is associated with times, places, people. Something you once had, but now is gone. As Frodo and Sam get further away from home, the Shire's music slowly disappears from the score, replaced instead by music full of sadness. If ever I was to marry someone, But this music is also comforting, existing in the space between joy and sorrow, a feeling that can only come at the end of a journey that has fundamentally changed who you are. Even as Frodo and Sam are saved, and even as they return to the Shire, Frodo knows that if he stays, 
his wounds will never heal, and the burden he carries will never be lifted. He knows that he has to leave into the West in order to complete his story. Howard Shaw has, over the course of 11 hours, mapped out a musical journey that is leading to one point. All of the music, the shires, the fellowships, even the music of darkness, distilled into one piece of music, heard as Frodo leaves his friends behind, left to exist only in the memories of those who remain. And that music is the third and final time we hear the Grey Havens. Now, finally, in D major. Marking the completion of the D major music of the Shire, transformed into a simple musical line, which sings out at the end of all things. This is why we care. This is the completion of the journey. What Howard Shaw has left behind is a musical legacy of unparalleled depth and beauty. His work for The Lord of the Rings can be compared to the operas of Wagner, scores full of melodies and themes that exist to both perfectly serve the story but that also have a wide-reaching, universal effect on us as emotional beings. And I think that's what all art, or good art, does well. It speaks to us about humanity and gives us the greatest reason to have hope as we all embark upon our own journeys through life. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. This has been a huge amount of fun to put together and I hope you've enjoyed all three videos in this Lord of the Rings series. And if you haven't seen all of them, then do catch up using the links in the description below. If you'd like to find out even more about these groundbreaking scores, I thoroughly recommend you buy Doug Adams' book about the music of the films. I've also put a link to that in the description. As always, see you next time.